All right, guys, continuing on with our intermediate test two review, we're on question 13, and now we're on to some vector addition. We've got one vector here at 128 volts at zero degrees, another here at 98 volts at 48 degrees, and we're going to find the vector sum for those two values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off drawing in my x and y axes here, just so I can show the vector addition and leave that original drawing intact. So here we have the x-axis, here we have the y-axis, and I'm going to start off with this vector right here, and I'm going to label that as my first vector, I'm going to label this guy A, and starting at this point of origin right here, I'm just going to draw that first vector in, sitting right on top of the x-axis, it has a value of 128 volts, and it's sitting right at 0 degrees. Then I'm going to add this one in. So the next vector, being the blue vector, I'm going to label this guy as my B vector there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that guy over so it is tip to tail with the first vector. Okay, so on my diagram here, I'm going to draw this in so that that vector is tip to tail with the same magnitude of 98 volts. And the angle is 48 degrees. So I'm going to drop in my 48 degrees right here. And again, that 48 degrees is in reference to the x-axis that we had drawn in there. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go from where we started to where we ended up with our resultant value. Okay. So from where we started right to where we ended up, this is going to be my resultant voltage. Now, what we need to do is we need to break each of these vectors down into their x and y components. Now, the red vector we can clearly see is sitting right on the x-axis, so we don't have to do anything with it. Uh, but this blue vector, we've got to find the x component, and we've got to find the y component. So I'm going to draw a line down from the tip there, and I'm going to create a 90-degree triangle, and I'm going to find the x and y coordinates for that guy as well. Now, what I find easier to do is to start off with a chart to organize all my thoughts and all the vectors there. So let's just scroll up here so we have a little bit more room. And so I'm going to start off with that first vector, vector A, and just doing a chart there. Actually, let me just do a diagram beside to show the actual vector, right? So this guy was 128 volts at zero degrees. And so we're going to put in our... Uh, vector, then we're going to put in our hypotenuse, then we're going to put in the angle, and then we're going to find our x component and our y component. Those are the things that they're sharing, the x coordinates and the y coordinates. So we can add those guys up in a little bit. So the first vector, we're going to label this guy as A. The angle we had here was at Sorry, the hypotenuse was 128 volts. The angle was 0 degrees. And in order to find this x component, then we're going to do the cos of the angle, so cos of 0 degrees, multiplied by the hypotenuse. Here, in order to find the y component, we're going to do the sine of that angle and then multiply by 128 degrees, multiply by the hypotenuse. Now we can see that this is clearly sitting right on the x-axis. So we know that this guy is going to be equal to 128, and the y component is going to be equal to nothing. Okay, just to confirm that, let's bring up the calculator. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is the cos of 0. So if we do cos of 0, then we find that is going to be equal to 1, right? So 1, and obviously 1 times 128 is going to give us 128. When we do the sine of 0, that's going to give us 0. So we'll do the sine of 0 degrees, and that's going to give us 0. And obviously 0 times 128 gives us 0 for the y component. Okay, so now we've broken this down into our x and y components. There's clearly everything sitting on the x component, and there is no y component whatsoever. Okay, this next one here, we're going to find the x component 
being this guy right here. This would be our x component for the b vector, and this would be our y component for the b vector. Okay, so again, you may want to do the chart. You may just want to do three triangles on the page. However you want to organize your thoughts, it's totally up to you. I like using the chart just because it gives me a form to kind of organize everything that I'm doing here. And this guy here is 98 volts. Beautiful. So my B vector there has a hypotenuse of 98 volts. The angle that it's happening at is 48 degrees. And in order to find the X component for that guy, I'm going to do the cos of that angle. So cos of 48 degrees times 98. And here for the Y component, uh, I've got the sine of 48 degrees. And I multiply that by my hypotenuse of 98. Sorry for not leaving too much room on the side here. Okay, so let's start off with this first one. So clear this out. The cos of 48 degrees times 98. Now again, be careful because these two values both end in 8, right? So it's easy to mix them up. Let's just make sure the angle is 48, yeah, and the hypotenuse is 98, yes. Hit enter, and our x component is going to be 65.57. Let's try and use two decimal places as we go through. If you can use more decimal places, that would be better. But let's try two decimal places at a minimum. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is the sine of 48 degrees. Multiply by our hypotenuse of 98. We find that it's 72. I'm going to round this up to 72.83. Okay, dropping those guys in. I know that this value now is 65.57, and I know that this is 72.83. Okay, you can double check your value 65.57 squared plus 72.83 squared. Square root will give you. 98 volts and now we're going to find our resultant value so at this point in the chart we're going to add these guys up i did my resultant in green so we'll keep going there so here we've got um sorry i grabbed the wrong color so here for our x component for the resultant that's going to be equal to our 128 plus our 65 0.57 and here the x component sorry y component for the resultant is going to be equal to 0 plus 72.83 so clearly the y component is equal to 72.83 and here for our x component here Let's find out 128 plus 65.57. That gives us 193.57. Beautiful. So now we've got our complete x component or x coordinates and our complete y coordinates for this resultant triangle here the green triangle okay so let me scroll up and make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing now so we're going to find this resultant triangle here and right now we know that the x component or the adjacent is 193.57 we know the y component is 72.83. So now we can use Pythagoras in order to find this hypotenuse value. So here we're going to do uh, 193.57 squared. Again, the square is on the outside of the brackets, plus 72.83. So we're adding up those areas to find the hypotenuse area. But we're just interested in the, the length of the hypotenuse, so we're going to do double brackets, and then we're going to do the square root of those guys. Okay, let's bring up the calculator, and we'll see if we can find our resultant voltage. Okay, so to save some time, I just dropped it onto the calculator here, and I put it in exactly the way that I have here. I have square root, double brackets, 193.57, close brackets, squared, 
plus 72.83 squared, and then finally close brackets. Then I'm going to hit equals, and then my total voltage there is 206 point, I'm going to run this up, 206.82 volts. So this value right here is 206.82 volts total. Okay, so that was using Pythagoras there. And again, if you can buy a calculator that allows you to put everything in just like this, and you can see exactly how you've put it in, it helps a lot. Um, if you have the, the, the cheaper and easier Casio, um, then you've got to picture all of that in your mind. If you don't have an issue with that, then keep going with that calculator. But if you're consistently having issues with your calculator, don't be cheap. Go and pick up a, a decent calculator for 20 bucks and you'll be able to view exactly what you're doing in the calculator. Then if you call me over or a buddy over and you say, listen, I keep putting this in, but I keep getting the wrong answer, we can clearly see where you've gone wrong. Oftentimes, if we're, we can see that the square is on the inside of the brackets, or you've forgot to put a bracket in, or you forgot to square root in order to find your final answer. So it helps a lot in troubleshooting where you're going wrong. Your knowledge of the of the the chart is not off, right? And your knowledge of what you're doing is not off. It's just a matter of how do I put it physically into the calculator. Now, last thing we need to do, guys, we need to find this angle right here. Now, the resultant angle is always going to be between the two angles that we're given. So it's going to be between 0 and 48 degrees. We can now use, we can use sine or cos or tan in order to find that angle. I'm going to use cos because later on I'm going to use cos for the power factor, but you can use whatever you're comfortable with. So again, let's just scroll down to give us a little bit more room. And again, in order to find that angle, so I'm going to use cos. I know that the cos relationship is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if I'm looking for my angle then, that's when I'm doing my inverse cos of that same ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And in this case, I'm doing the inverse cos. My adjacent is this one right here, my x component of 193.57 divided by my, my total of, or my hypotenuse of 206.82. And let's punch that into the calculator now. So again, I got to do the inverse cos, so I'm going to do second function. Come on, buddy. Second function cos. There we go. So inverse cos of 193.57 divided by 206.82. Just going to close my bracket there, keep everything in line. Hit enter, and I'm looking for a value that's between 0 and 48. Beautiful. There's an angle of 20.62 for my final angle. So that answer goes right here. Didn't leave myself too much room. 20.62 degrees. And that angle is right here. And that tells us how much the total voltage and total current are out of phase. Excellent, guys. So hopefully you came up with the, the same answer. If we just scroll out here, we can go through our steps here. So our first step is to draw our first vector in, then draw our second vector in. Then we drop either one down to the x-axis and create a right angle triangle. You can do three different triangles here, or you can do the chart, vector A, vector B, hypotenuse, angle. X component is always using the cos, so this is the adjacent value. The opposite, or the y component, is always using sine. We added these values up, the 128 and the 65.57. And over here, we just added these guys up to get 72.83. x component was 193.57. And we used Pythagoras in order to find our total voltage of 206.82. Finally, we can use sine or cos or tan. I decided to use cos. I used the inverse cos of the adjacent over the hypotenuse and it gave me a final angle of 20.62 degrees. All right, guys, keep going on the playlist and we'll go on with question number 14.